Hmm. There's a problem. Can you hear me? Can someone just type yes, please? Or no? Okay, okay. All right, okay, okay. All right, okay. MashaAllah. So, okay, like, can we continue? Okay. All right, so. I was saying, all right, so Moses. Moses, um, the law, the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, in between them, we have 613 laws altogether. But the cross of the law is what we call today the Ten Commandments. That is the heart of the matter. Without the Ten Commandments, the rest of the law mm -hmm. fall apart. Without the law, the rest of the Bible doesn't stand. Everything else, the Psalms, the Prophets, mm -hmm. and the New Testament, are all fundamentally based upon the law. Without the law, you don't go anywhere. So when you engage the book of Leviticus altogether, that is generally known in the scholarly sphere as the dietary law book. You engage it, that is the dietary law book. Why am I addressing this, ladies and gentlemen? You know we Muslims. You know, for those of you who are here in the diaspora and even back there, you know we Muslims about our diets. This is no, this is no hidden thing. Muslims, unless it is halal. Halal means lawful and permissible and clean from God. It means that God has made, made it lawful for us to eat. God has permitted us to eat it and then God has said it is clean. That is the meaning of halal. Because many people say halal shop, they don't really get it. Everything in the halal shop has gone through Islamic scrutiny, has gone through Islamic regulation, and it is qualified for human consumption. Why is this so? For us Muslims, it is clear. People know that. We don't eat dead things. We don't eat things with um, sharp claws like dogs, bats, and all of these things. We don't eat those. We don't eat blood. We don't eat pig. We don't eat all of these things. Christians who usually think they are not the same. I told a Christian just here that if you read the Bible, you can only go to the halal shop to eat. The reason why we usually think the halal shop is only for Muslims is because we are unaware of the Bible. Leviticus chapter number 11 is the dietary law book. All the things that are prohibited for a Muslim today are prohibited in the book of Leviticus. All of it. Pick in particular Leviticus chapter number 11 verse number 7. Engage that. Read from Leviticus chapter number 11 verse number 17 going on. You see all of these things. Don't eat from blood. Don't eat dead things. Don't eat all of these things. Dogs and so on. God says we cannot engage in eating that. He has given us lamb. He has given us cows. He has given us fish. And he says, eat from those. He says, in them there are medications, like in camels. He says, in, the, in, in honey, there is medication. On the trees, there are medications. On the leaves, there are medications. We choose today to disobey that creator. But we cannot even disobey a doctor who says, take your drugs twice a day. For us, that doctor has said something we cannot break. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, the person who sent Moses, Abraham, Jesus, Muhammad, is the doctor of doctors. He gives us his commands and we drop it down. Here we are. He says, don't eat this. It is not good for you. We say we are smarter than him. Here we are. Don't go there. It is not good for you. We say we are smarter than him. There we are. When you get a telephone, on it they will write, don't immerse it in water because it will get spoiled. Don't throw it from a height because it will get damaged. You agree? Yeah. If your phone falls from a height, that's why you put it some protector on it. You lose the screen. If you immerse it in water, you get it spoiled. That is because the manufacturer instructs you so. Then we are talking about the manufacturer of your own system. The air that you breathe. 
is warning you that don't eat this thing. Don't eat that one. Don't touch this one. So some Christians will say, look, man, but that is the Old Testament, Abdul. You don't know what you're talking about. Old Testament according to what and who? So let's go to the New Testament. Most times they put these claims on Jesus. Peace be upon him. They say Jesus Christ has come. Then that Old Testament is old. So let's ask Jesus. Where do we see Jesus today? Do we see him? No, we don't. So where can we understand if you address such a thing? We go back to the Bible. We go to Matthew. We say, Matthew, do you know Jesus? Matthew says, oh yeah, I do. Okay. Did Jesus say anything about the law? Matthew says, um, yeah, 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 I think so. So Matthew, what do you know? Matthew says, open me then. Go to chapter 5. Read from verse 17. Jesus Christ says, think not that I've come to change the law or the prophets. I've come not to change but to fulfill. Till heaven and earth passes, pass away, not an iota or a jot shall by any wise pass from the law of God. Therefore I tell you, anyone who obeys the law and teach others to obey the law shall be called great in the kingdom of God. And those who disobey the law and ask others to disobey the law shall be called uh, little in the kingdom of God. Verily, verily I say unto you, unless your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Christ and Pharisees, you shall by no wise enter the kingdom of God. This is the word of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He has not come to change the law, but to fulfill them. He goes to explain that particular quotation of his. He goes on in the book of Matthew, chapter number 30. What does he say? Chapter number 5, verse number 30. What does he say? He said, you were told in the past that adultery is a sin. But today I tell you, if you lost after a woman, you've committed adultery in thine heart. I'm asking Christians, I'm asking myself, how does that change the law? Does it make the law tighter or does it make the, the law changed? I say it makes it tighter. It's a simple, it's a simple superior interpretation of the law. In the past, you were told that the action makes you sin. I'm telling you today that thinking about the action you have already seen. Jesus didn't change the law, ladies and gentlemen. It is important. It is important that we go back to God. This is the time. If there is no time you think about God, God has given you the opportunity. People want to be on laptops. People want to be on telephones because they are on Android. God has said, lock down and enjoy Android. Go home and enjoy it. So much so that we even get tired of the thing. This is the time to go back to God. Now, why did I bring this up? It is important to always know where something is coming from. Our disobedience and arrogance is just too right up there. What does Islam say? What does Islam say? Now, that's why I tell you, I believe in progressive revelation. Let's go to the last and final prophet. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last and final prophet. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We've not sent you, O Muhammad, but as a mercy to the entire world. But as a mercy to animals, to human beings, even to jinns. Once Prophet Muhammad was seated with his companions and a camel walked carefully and when he saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he slowed by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet Muhammad stood up, went closer to the camel and placed his ear by the neck of the camel. After some time, he stood up and asked his companions, who has this camel? They said it is XYZ person. Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad says, tell the person to stop overloading this camel. The camel came to complain to me. Allahu Akbar. The camel came to complain to me. Allah says, Prophet Muhammad is mercy to the entire world. He's mercy even to animals. We beat dogs today. We insult people that they are prostitutes. Prophet Muhammad said, you don't know who is going to paradise except Allah. So he gives an analogy. He said there was a prostitute, there was a woman whose entire life has been prostitution. She has been a prostitute all her life. An outcast of the society. But once she was seated by a well site and a dog was passing very thirsty, she used her shoes to carry some water from the well and give the dog. And Prophet Muhammad said, Allah forgive all her sin for that one action that she did. Mercy to that prostitute, Muhammad showed. Mercy to the dog, which teaches us today that even dogs, we should treat dogs with dignity. We should give water. That much charity is enough to take you to paradise. 
This is the position of God. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his wife. We are we are taught in. Now listen, the Quran is a separate volume from what we call the Hadiths. The Hadiths are the sayings, the ways, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These are recorded in separate volumes. We have actually seven canon of the Hadiths, amongst which Bukhari and Muslim are on top of the list. Bukhari and Muslim, they reported that Prophet Muhammad said, when a plague comes from a place, when there is a pandemic, when there is an epidemic, those who are in the place should stay there. They shouldn't leave to another place. And those who are elsewhere should not go there. Isn't that quarantine? In detail? La Republique du Cameroon. We hear that France has been chopped by coronavirus. More than three planes came back to that country. People paid bribes at the airport to the police officers to flee out of quarantine. They did the same in the hotels. And they are now using their buses all over into southern Cameroon to spread this pandemic. Prophet Muhammad says, stay where you are. Let the other person stay where he is. We must obey God. If we didn't, this is when we have to obey God. Now, you know Muslims, uh, the Muslims know, and Christians know, there is something called ablution. It is a ritual that Muslims perform every time, or most times they have to pray. They have to perform their daily salah, daily prayer, khamsa salawati, five daily prayers. We wash our hands three times, this hand three times, this one three times. We rinse our, our mouth using our fingers as a brush. We put water in our nostrils a little bit halfway, spray them out. We wash our face. We clean we wash our hands out up to elbows. We clean we 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 wet our hands with water, rub over the hair and use our fingers like this. Clean our ears and clean like this, and then we wash our feet. This is a command from God, not in the Quran. Genesis chapter number 17, verse number 3, And Abraham washed his hands and prayed. In the book of Numbers, Moses and Aaron washed their hands and feet and prayed. Joshua washed his hands and feet and prayed. In the, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, the disciples washed their hands before entering the temple. This is a command that has been given to all prophets. Muhammad did not invent it. He did not start it. He only regulated it and then he sanctified it for us. He only regulated these laws, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What is the advice today? Wash your hands always. Make sure you don't touch your, your face with the hands. Wash your face always. The thing only affects your, your respiratory organ. So keep your nostrils clean, all of these things. The way of God has kept us on this path already. It's a practice we do already. And this is exact thing with Ebola. Don't eat rats. Don't eat pigs. Muslims say we don't eat them. As a matter of fact, female Muslims are instructed by Prophet Muhammad not to even shake hands with men they don't know. How do you get Corona today? Shaking of hands is one of the, is one of the thing. Muslims... There's something called a niqab. It's a part of hijab, part of the dress code. They cover up to their nostrils. They were insulted for that. Today, the whole world is covering their faces and moving. It is no more terrorism on Muslims. It is anti-corona practices. Islam says you can greet from a distance by saying, Assalamu alaikum, just like Jesus Christ did in the book of Luke, chapter number 24. When he comes back to the upper room, after his supposed crucifixion, he says, Shalom, me alaykum. That is Aramaic. In Arabic, Assalamu alaikum. From a distance, you can say, peace be with you, and it's enough. You don't need to shake hands. Christians and Muslims must go back to their God. We, we have to stop behaving like pagans. Muslims and Christians are not pagans. We believe in a creator. You read from Genesis, you see a creator. He instructs you how to live. And then you come today, you live like the white man. You say you are now civilized. You are Western. That's what we say. We are Western. And when we ask you people, what do you mean Western? 
Do you know more than 90, 95%, especially of black diaspora, don't understand this white man system they boast of? They understand that you can get money from credit card and buy mortgage, buy house, buy this one. But the concept of liberalism and capitalism, they don't know. That is why they are programmed. They are programmed like that. They don't know God. That is why women can sit and talk to their husbands anyhow. Throw your husbands out of the house. You share that you must take the children this week to school. You do that other one. You call police for them because you have lost touch with God. You have forgotten that in the book of Timothy. Your Jesus is saying you should submit to your husband and you should respect him as your master. When he talks, you should not talk. But you come to a liberal world and you can do anything. Here we are. What should we improve today? What should we be doing today? There is shortage of supplies everywhere, of food, of medications. This is the time Muslim and Christians, dear people, we must share. Jesus Christ says, and when you do it, when the left hand does it, the right hand should not know. Give charity, Jesus Christ teaches us in the book of Matthew. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. As a matter of fact, that is the second most important commandment according to him. We have to give. There is shortage of food. This is why Muslims should tell you that this is a trial period. This is a test. To you who God gave, can you give back now? Can you protect another person? Can you even stand by some other person? Prophet Muhammad says, you are not a believer. If you don't love for your neighbor what you love for yourself and hate for your neighbor what you hate for yourself. He said, shall I tell you what you should do to increase love amongst yourself? They said, yes, tell us, master. He said, Ashnu salam extend peace amongst you. Say salam amongst you. In another narration, he says, you are not a believer if you would eat while your neighbor starves. And they asked him, who is my neighbor? He said, 40 houses to the left. 40, 40 houses to the right, 40 houses in front, 40 houses behind. He didn't say Muslim, Christian. This is why I started by saying we are in this together. This is the time humanity must come and hold their hands together. Prophet Muhammad taught us that all the children of Adam, all the children of Adam, Muslim or non-Muslim, all of you are one body. When the hand pains, the head cannot sleep. And when the head aches, the feet cannot sleep. God has proven that to us with coronavirus. Some countries thought they are better. Even La Republic arrogance would tell us that when the Yaounde breeds, the rest of Cameroon, in quotes, is free. The United States perhaps would think that, that they, nothing can affect them. Perhaps Saudi Arabia would think that nothing can affect them. God has brought us to a standstill because one person, one part of the body, one country, is affected here we are all in one stalemate we are in this together it is our problem we have to share dear southern cameronians particularly this is the time to be a cheerful giver this is the time to practice all those things i see in the churches turn your hand shake your neighbor hand tell you say i love you well well Practice those things now. Practice that shaking hand and telling neighbor, I love you well, well now. Share the little gary you have with your neighbors. Southern Cameroonians, don't forget, we were already suffering. And this is another level. We have to share. This is why I'm calling on all the diaspora. We must put our hands together. We have a serious problem in the Southern Cameroons. I see it coming. Besides the oppression, the murder, the maiming, the incarceration, we have this pandemic which is being transported back there. We must do our best, dear diaspora. You must put yourselves together and make sure every house in your country, Southern Cameroon, has food. You can do that. They are not asking for vehicles. They are not asking for smartphones. They are not asking for computers. They are not asking for clothes. They are asking for food. Please stand up and give them food. It is easy to manage that. Diaspora, can you not send three loads, three vehicles, load of food 
in the northern zone? Can you not send four lots, four vehicles, lot of food, trucks in the southern zone? Can you not do this? All you, you, you tell us, men, men, one are gonna. This is the time to stand up to men, men, one are gonna. My bad. All those things. Stand up to it. This is the time to stand by your neighbor. This is the time charity should be at the top of our list. Let's give back. Let's look after our people. They ran to La Republic du Cameroon. And I said it sometime earlier. They ran to La Republic of Cameroon because of guns. Because their villages were raised. Today La Republic du Cameroon is registering high numbers of a pandemic that will take them. Where would they run back to? They will run back to the house. And I said it earlier on even. Don't go anywhere when there is a trouble in your place. You can shake but remain in that place. So, this is the time to increase your righteous deeds. All the things you are re required of you to do as a Christian, this is the time to do them in multiple folds. From reading your Bible, from extending love to neighbors, mm -hmm. from fasting and all of these things, increase all of these things. This is the time to get closer to God. Read the Bible. This is the time to look at those dietary laws. This is the time to engage the gospel. Ask Jesus what he's saying. Ask Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Revise those things some more. Read the letters of Paul. Go back to Isaiah. Study it. Look at the Psalms. Look at Prophet Jeremiah. Look at Prophet Job. Read these stories again on your own. Don't depend on the, fair, on the, on the tales you hear from church only. Read them now yourself. Engage in this conversation with the book yourself. It goes same for Muslims. It goes same for Muslims. But at the same time, dear Christians and dear Muslims, Islam and Christianity values life over everything. Because Muslims and Christians, we go by the concept of congregational mm -hmm. worship. This is instructed in the Bible and in the Quran, agreed. But what we must be careful about is that we cannot put life over congregational worship because it's against the scripture still. So, this large congregational worship, Muslims and Christians, for example, here in Canada, I think for, 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 for a month now, we've not done any congregational worship in the mosque because we cannot risk going against God even when it has to do with part of his worship. There's another option to pray in the house. You can have a small family, five, four of you can pray, or you yourself alone. But those large congregational worships, we need to realize that we cannot insist on doing that. And let's be careful. Let's not chase the goose by ignoring the fact that La Republic is highly infected. The numbers are rising mm -hmm. and their vehicles are leaving and coming into the southern Cameroons daily. Don't ignore this fact. We have to be careful. This is the time to increase in all of this. Get closer to God. There are many Christians and many Muslims who don't have the Quran and the Bible. And today you don't really need to have the hard copy. There are applications on the internet. Even if you don't need the app, you don't want to download an application, the Quran is, is there on Wikipedia. The Bible is there. You know, you need to engage these things. Uh, I see many people are coming late already. And um, uh, just to apologize because the internet disappointed in the diaspora. And uh, uh, yeah, there's a parchment that we, we left already and we are, we are forging ahead with this. So um, please, you prepare questions which I would like to take. I, re I don't like having long live shows. So um, I would like to take questions on this uh, particular subject, uh, but just to re remind us, um, again, this is, this is the time to get back as one family. God has humbled mankind to face for the first time, at least in contemporary history, to face one thing without anybody having a complex. America doesn't think she's a big man here. China doesn't think she's a big girl. France doesn't think she's a smart boy. Even La Republic doesn't think she's a head class prefect. Everybody is on their feet by Mr. Little Corona. That is God for you. Everybody is on their toe. It's not like tsunami where someone will speak from a high tone or the situation in uh, the, the thing in, in, in Haiti or Ethiopia or any of these places or Syria or the southern Cameroons. Now everyone is being called by God. This is why I don't want us Muslims and Christians 
to say, okay, look, it's about humanity, irrespective, whether you're Hindu, whether you're Buddhist, whether mm -hmm. you're a Taoist, mm -hmm. whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Christian, we have to approach this from a human perspective. But as a Muslim and a Christian, I reminded you and I'm reminding myself, we should never forget where we are coming from. If you respect the white man who manufactured a car and say for you to start driving, put your seatbelt, start the car, and all of it, if you respect them, if you even trust the GPS to take you from point A to point B, and you don't want to trust God on his commands in the Bible, then you need to ask yourself a question, what are you or who are you deceiving? Same thing for Muslims. If you believe in all these things about human manufacturing, and then you don't believe in the creator's design and his instruction manual, then you need to ask yourself, what are you and who are you deceiving? But I think it is about time. So main point again, Christians, go back to the book of Leviticus. That's the dietary book. The dietary law is embedded in especially book of Leviticus. Read it and see. We know how we know how coronavirus came. Yeah, God allowed it. We do understand as Muslims and Christians, but it came through disobedience. People eat rats, they eat worms, they eat mosquitoes, they eat caterpillars, they eat every and anything, and they are allowed everywhere and anywhere. Go back to Leviticus for Muslims, go to Surah Al Maida and Surah Al Baqarah, see the dietary law. God has said, you are a Christian and you Muslims, you have a diet. You cannot eat anyhow and you cannot eat anything. If you cannot change the world, don't change yourself. Halal shops, halal shops are shops, actually Abrahamic shops, not just Muslim shops. If you follow Abraham, follow Moses, follow Jesus, you would agree that what you should be eating can only come from halal shops. Nowhere else. Anything besides that, you need to go and look at the Bible once more. All right. So, um, I know um, there are many prayers Christians can do from uh, the book of Psalms. There are many prayers, um, especially Psalm. Well, let's, let's, there are many Psalms, but you can read from Psalm 43 up to 90. Um, it's my advice. But for, for, for Muslims uh, and for Christians also, dear Muslims and dear Christians, the Quran is not a Muslim book. The Quran is the guidance for mankind. The Quran is a book that God sent to the entire world. The Quran is Muhaymin, is the controller, the watcher of our scriptures that have come previously to it, like the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil. What you call the Bible. The Quran is a chain and, fi and finalization of the book you believe in. You're invited to read the Quran. You're invited to investigate these things yourself. This doesn't mean you abandon the Bible. This doesn't mean you necessarily become a Muslim. Take a look at these things. Make what you make out of it. But I want to invite you to the Quran, chapter number 113, the last two chapters of the Quran, and chapter number 114. Allah says, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim." Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, I'm reciting the Quran. Say, I seek refuge from from the from, from the Lord. Sorry, I seek refuge in the Lord of Daybreak. From the evil of that which He has created, from the evil of the darkness when it is intense, and from the evil of malignment and witchcraft. Again, and from the evil of malignment and witchcraft, and from the evil of the envier when they envy it. Notice what it says I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak, the God of Abraham, God of Jacob, God of Isaac, God of Moses, God of Jesus, God of Muhammad. It says, From the evil of darkness when it is intense, from the evil of malignant witchcraft your coronavirus and from the evil of envy when they envy it jealous people when they are jealous seek for refuge against them from god
That is what I read in English. Chapter 114 says, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind, from the evil of sneaking whisperer, who whispered in the hearts of mankind, of jinn and in mankind. Ladies and gentlemen, look at these chapters of the Quran. This one says, Kul a'udhu bi rabin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, min sharrin wathwatin han nas, alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas, min al jinnati wan nas. Chapter 113, just type on Google, they are very short recitation, and chapter 114. This is what I'm advising Muslims who believe in Islam. This, this is the greatest dua for now. Especially after Salah, make sure you recite Surah Ikhlas, Falak and Nas. Do it all the time. Do it all the time. It works magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make this corona pass by you even when it's this close. But first, ladies and gentlemen, we must obey him in the things that bring such things like corona before we seek his guidance. It doesn't mean we cannot seek his guidance, but let's always try to obey him to avoid things that bring it in the first place. Simply disobedience to dietary law. Or there are other theories that, of course, it could is something that was manipulated. I don't know that. But let's go with the main cause as analyzed by science. Disobedience to dietary law has caused the world to stand still. Americans are shaking like that. Canadians are shaking. British people, white man, they shake. They think they fear by a virus. I thought they knew everything. I thought they could fly to the moon. So Corona could be nothing. Allah says, The plan and God plans, but God is the best of planner. Nothing is outside the dominion of God. Nothing is outside the dominion of God. This brings me to this question. I had a conversation once with a Christian, and um, we, we, we fell apart because I, I said, he said, with God everything is possible. I said, no. In Islam, we don't say that. With God everything is not possible. The guy was like, what do you mean? So God has some, um, some deficiency in powers? I said, no, I'm actually going to explain and you're going to see the greatness in God. What the Quran says is, uh, ala kulli shayin qadir. With God, everything, sorry, God does everything that he intends. Allah is the doer of all he intends. So what does God intend? Evil things? Definitely no. Can God create another God? I want to see a no or yes. Can God create another God? Can Almighty God create another Almighty God? Yes or no? Quickly. Can someone say yes or no? Can Almighty God create another Almighty God? Oh, no one is replying. Okay, the answer is Almighty God cannot, cannot create another Almighty God. So those are the things God cannot do. And there is no way God can throw you out of his dominion. He has everything. He is the owner of this thing that we see. You cannot go out of his dominion. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'll, if, if you have a question, uh, I would like to take three questions. So, um, so, um, yeah, so thank you very much. Um, we prayed earlier and I've shared this prayer from, from Psalm 43 of going down. Those are, they are good. Um, I saw some good, um, lines there also. This is the time to come back together. We need to pray hard, read your Bibles, read your Quran's, share with your neighbors, extensively, ex extensively share with neighbors this time with the, especially on ground zero, they need it so badly. Oh, I've seen no, no. So, any questions? I'll just stand by for questions if you do have some. Uh, meantime, I think uh, this is it for today. I don't want to keep you here long. Any questions? I'll be waiting.
Oh yeah, peace man. Does it mean um, we don't eat things like pig? Yes, according to the Quran and according to the Bible. But the Bible is even stricter than the Quran on the issue of pig. If you read the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7, God says clearly, And as of the swine, do not touch of it. Do not eat of it because it is unclean for, for you. Thou shalt not touch even the carcasses. Though it has hooves, it doesn't eat the cuts. Cuts means grass. So yes, God has not allowed us to eat things like pig. This is why when Jesus Christ even took out demons from the mad person's body, he threw it into the pigs. And yeah, the Quran is very clear on that, brothers. We, we, we must find other things to eat. We should not eat. Now, ask veterinary doctors, what is a pig? Pig today has been proven to have more than 73 different diseases. It has very dangerous tapeworms. Unlike the tapeworms of other animals, that of the pig hides in the tissues of fat. Pig, pork, number one, has basically fat building material instead of muscle breeding, building materials. The tapeworms that it contains mm -hmm. are so bad and they hide so much so that they don't die easily even when you cook them with some level of temperature. When they get to your eye, short-sightedness and you can possibly go blind. They can even make you go mad. They can make you lose memory. They can shorten your perception. So to me, as a Muslim and a, and a Christian, I'll simply go with the obedience of God. There are other things I can eat. There is lamb, there is goat, there is um, mutton, there is fish. I must not try the one God said we should not try. Uh, can lies telling succeed over truth in politics? Uh, yeah, in politics anything is possible, and I'm not. This is not a political situation, so yeah. Can I set shed some light on the subject of divinity? Do you really want us to do that? No, this is a it's a sensitive subject. Uh, you can inbox me; I can do that for you. I know it's a divinity of Jesus Christ. It's a sensitive subject, and this is not um uh, the time and 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 the and the right um. Uh, shadow, yeah. Do we still have hope in this revolution? Oh, yeah. Please, the revolution is on and it is on track. Inshallah, we shall get there. Do your own part. Behave as though the revolution relied on you totally and completely. Do your own part. Stop complaining. Have hopes. Do not blink. We shall get there. Do I think coronavirus in my, is man-made? Oh, that's a possibility, but I don't know. I don't have primary source material on that, but it's a possibility. Oh, someone says I should explain halal again. Yeah, halal is an Arabic word. It simply means, halal means pure, clean, permissible. So halal is lawful, number one. God has made it lawful for us to eat. He has permitted us to eat it in a particular way and then it is clean for us to eat. That is halal. When you get into a halal shop, it's not only beef or mm -hmm. things like that that you find. Vegetables, all the things that you find there are halal. Things that are lawful, permissible and clean. Halal. That's why I referred also to the dietary law of the book of Leviticus. Go and check. You will see that all of them, they match the halal procedure that halal shops use. We cannot eat every and anything as Christians. You cannot do every and anything with your cell phone. And if you cannot do that, what makes you think you can do every and anything with your own body? I need the Quran in English. Oh, please inbox me and tell me where you are. I'll get you a Quran. Uh, Masake. Yeah. All right. Um, is there a difference between God and Allah? No, no, no. God is the English word for, 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 for the Arabic. Well, God refers to the English word, to the Arabic word Allah. But really, God doesn't really depict Allah because Allah means one and only. And why you see we Muslims prefer using Allah instead of God? Because with Allah, it is only Allah. You cannot play with it. But with the word God, if you add S on it, it becomes God's. And it is usable in English. Mm -hmm. If you say Father in it, it becomes uh, oh, um, Father after God, it becomes Godfather, which means a guidance. We don't have that in Islam. And you can also say goddess, a female god. We don't have that in Islam. 
For us, Allah doesn't have a gender. He's neither male or female. Because he says in chapter 112 in the Quran, well, uh, And there is nothing like unto me. So, um, God, yeah, he can refer to Allah in a particular context. But um, actually, Allah, if you go to the deep definition, is different from the God the way we use it in English today. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, uh, Comrade Doris. Thank you from Brussels. Thank you. Okay, I think we asked that one. Is there any difference between God and Allah? Okay. Okay. Okay, I think all the questions have come. So we can go, right? Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Please ignore every distraction in the revolution. Ignore nonsense. Focus on the prize. And listen to me. Um, dear, dear Southern Cameroonians, listen to me. All of these people who are destroying our revolution by way of destruction, I promise you, they will not go free. But the point is that we are not going to legitimize their destruction by looking at them now. They will not go free. Put everything down. Write everything down. We would make sure if we die, others will follow. So, for example, myself now, I'm in Canada to serve Southern Cameroons. It's never easy. I'm writing on my memoir. I'm sending it to multiple comrades to save it. I'm noting everything that is going on with names and other facts. We are not going to let anybody go free. Anybody slowing us down shall face the law of the people of Southern Cameroons. With us speaking today alive or with us dead, they shall face it even going to their second generation. This is a promise. Put everything down. Save them with trusted colleagues. Save them with trusted comrades. We shall bring them to book. We shall deal with every detractor. There are many people who have nothing to do but to stop the movement of this struggle. With their egos. Most of them are not even for the independence of Southern Cameroons. They are not. This is my findings. We are documenting it. And we are going to pursue it. Stay tight. Stay resolute. Do not be discouraged. It is never going to be a walk in the park. But God is with us. It is only us that can decide to fail. Because God has not failed us. And he's not going to fail us. It is only us that can decide to stand as a people and move ahead. Defend our people, especially with the humanitarian dilemma that our people are in. Imagine our comrades right now in the Kondengi prisons, in the prisons in New Bell with this coronavirus. Imagine our people in refugee camps. Imagine women and children in the bushes whose villages have been raised. Instead of focusing on how to help them, we fight in ego, power, politics, envy. We are not going to, we will not fight these people now. We will not attack them now, but they will definitely pay. They will pay in the courts of the Southern Cameroons. So, stay resolute. Help your people. Stay on the price. We shall get there. It is our self-determination, remember. If self-determination is important and good for the liberal Western country, it is also important and good. Compulsory, mandatory for the people of Southern Cameroons. It is our decision to be who we are, embedded in history and law. It is our decision and no one else's. But we have detractors. We have people who work with La Republic du Cameroon to enslave us. They pretend in the diaspora as though they are for the revolution, but they are not for the revolution. I am a witness. I've seen that. And even if I die, I'm sharing that with other comrades. Make sure you don't let them go free, Southern Cameroonians. They will pay. All right. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me leave you now here. I have to enter into another conference call. Thank you so much. Stay safe, J. Southern Cameroonians. Please keep yourself in your homes. Stay away from the streets. Keep the distances. Make sure you improve hygiene. Maintain hygiene. Keep your children out of harm's way. Stay home, J. Southern Cameroonians. Stay home. Diaspora, reach out and help our people, please. Get them food. Get them food just to eat, just food. Give them food. Thank you so much. Wa akhru dawana. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.